much. Thank you everyone for allowing me to present my research today. Um, again, I will be talking about uh, smoking in regards to laparoscopic and opening wall hernias uh, with the Nisquip data set. This one, thank you. Uh, these are the study authors that uh, helped support me with this project. And I have no financial disclosures or conflict of interest. So as we've heard multiple times this week, uh, inguinal hernia surgery is probably the most common procedure that's uh, performed in general surgery. Um, despite advances in techniques uh, since 1887 when Dr. Bassini created the procedure, uh, post-operative complications still occur. And there's been a lot of investigation as to preoperative risk factors that could be modified to try to reduce those post-operative complications. Um, some things we've heard this week already have been smoking, nutritional status, um, and obesity specifically. Uh, looking at the literature, there's a lot of small studies investigating the effects of smoking on post-operative complications, but there really isn't a lot of work in terms of large popula populations, which is what the goal of this uh, project was. So we use the ACS NISQIP data set, which is a data set that compiles uh, participating hospital patient information that's de-identified into a database. They look at preoperative characteristics of the patients, intraoperative variables, as well as postoperative um, outcomes, and they're recorded into a computer and available for participating people to use for their own work. Um, what we did was we took the data set, uh, the participant user file from years 2009 to 2012, and there were about 90,000 patients that had an inguinal hernia surgery, whether open or laparoscopic. Um, we looked at uh, the, the factors on the slide, uh, and we queried the database twice. The first was for uh, whether or not people had smoked at all in their lifetime versus those who had never smoked at all. And the second query was for if people had smoked within a year of their surgical procedure, or if they had never smoked or had quit prior to one year. These were our outcomes of interest for the study. Um, I categorized them by by groups, because that will become important later. Uh, but these were the, the targeted outcomes we were looking for. And for our methods, we did two things. We did a univariate analysis first. All of our outcomes were binary, meaning either pneumonia occurred or pneumonia did, did not occur, for example. Um, and then we performed a multivariate analysis to control for those preoperative characteristics like age, sex, and comorbidities to see if there was, in fact, a relationship between smoking and the outcome of interest. Um, so unfortunately, there was some data that was missing from this database. So what you see highlighted in blue are the outcomes that we were able to at least look for a statistically significant relationship with, and this is for current smokers. And looking at historical smokers, there's even less um, outcomes that we were able to say whether or not there was a significant relationship. So this is the first table. Uh, this is just the demographic slide for the historical and current smoking group. Um, as you can see, there's quite a significant number of patients in each group. And the average number of pack years for the historical smokers was 27.4 years. Um, there were more males and more patients underwent open procedures in both groups, and there were statistically significant differences in every comorbidity, with more uh, historical smokers having a greater number of people with a history of COPD. The second table is for the second query, whether or not people had smoked within 12 months prior to surgery, or they had quit and never smoked at all. And again, you see a greater number of males and a greater number of open cases. Um, what you don't see is the statistically significant differences in comorbidities. They're, they're still present, uh, but the not active smokers, meaning the people who had either quit or never smoked at all, had um, in some cases more frequent comorbidities than the current smokers. So when we performed uh, univariate analysis, we had to group some of our outcomes in order to have a greater number to find uh, relationships. So we grouped some of them by their category respiratory, meaning pneumonia, pulmonary embolus, for example. Hematologic would be bleeding requiring transfusion or DVT as another example. And what we found were there were statistically significant associations between 
uh, historical smoking status and infectious outcomes. So that specifically includes sepsis and shock. And there was a significant association between current smoking status and wound complications, which includes superficial infection, organ space infection. When we performed our multivariate analysis, uh, we were controlling for those preoperative risk factors that we discussed. Um, what we found was there were significantly increased risk of pneumonia and return to the operating room for both current and historical smokers. So looking at, taking a step back and looking at this data, what have we found? We found some things that we may have already assumed, that smoking does in fact increase your risk of pneumonia. I think what's even more interesting is in, when we controlled for that, people having a history of COPD, their risk was still there. Um, and that relationship was also present for current smokers. Uh, both current and historical smokers had an increased risk of returning to the operating room. Uh, however, this database is limited in that we don't really know the reason why that was the case. Uh, we can speculate, perhaps it was related to those wound complications, maybe they were getting source control, and not for something like bleeding, as that was not a significant uh, association, but we can't really prove that at this stage. And other limitations of the study is that it's a retrospective review of a prospectively ma maintained database. Um, we did have a pretty large patient population, so we're, we were able to draw some conclusions, but there are still some things missing that would have been nice to have uh, for additional conclusions. Uh, there were also was no ASA status included in the, this database, so we couldn't say how sick patients were when they went into the operating room. We also did not know what, what kind of mesh they had, if they had any mesh at all, which may have played a role in any wound complications. And the data is only there for 30 days post-procedure. So if anyone had a recurrence later on down the road, we wouldn't know. And if there were any other complications after 30 days, they were not included in this project. So it has been shown uh, before that watchful waiting is a safe uh, alternative if you want to use that time period to improve those preoperative risk factors. Um, and it has also been shown that abstinence from smoking anywhere from four to eight weeks pre-procedure pre um, is shown to decrease wound infection. So at this point, future directions for this would be to specifically target those current smokers uh, and try to modify their risk pre-procedure, but also counsel them that even if they do quit within that time period, they are at increased risk of complications compared to people who have never smoked at all. Thank you.